My name is Maciej Sobczak. Uh, I would like to present you a, a programming technique that, that allows to implement uh, polymorphic callbacks uh, in bindings between ADA and C++. Uh, the problem statement is that uh, there is a C++ library which uh, offers some interesting functionality and it contains a notification mechanism that uh, allows to deliver uh, information about uh, some events uh, to users. Um, if uh, that notification mechanism is based on uh, object-oriented concepts, uh, then it's uh, a bit challenging to create a good binding for, uh, for such a library while preserving the object-oriented nature of the callback. The polymorphic keyword, the buzzword that you see here, really refers to the dispatching nature of this, of this notification delivery. This programming technique uh, was not developed in a vacuum. Uh, it was actually used to solve uh, a real uh, problem. And uh, I would like to uh, quickly show you this, uh, this application context uh, uh, where it uh, has been used. Uh, there is a YAMI for communication library. It's a multi-language asynchronous messaging library, uh, which uh, uh, is a communication library with focus on, on, on control systems, um, its internal structure is roughly this. There are more components which are of no interest to us. Uh, uh, at the very bottom layer, there is a C++ core component which uh, manages uh, low-level um, uh, communication concepts like socket operation, connection management, but also queues. Uh, Above this, there are high-level components uh, uh, for general purpose programming, which implement um, higher-level messaging constructs, like publish, subscribe messaging, things like this. And user programs usually are built on top of that, so they call general purpose components. Occasionally, they might need to refer to the core components. Uh, for the uh, pure C++ development, there is absolutely no problem in integrating on it because uh, this is a single language. It becomes a little bit challenging on the ADA side. <coughs> Please note that this part uh, is not related to ADA core component. It's uh, <laughs> simply a wrapper for the core component of the library. Uh, the challenging part here is that in many cases there are events which are discovered at the bottom la the layer here and which have to be delivered higher up this stack to user programs where they can handle something like an incoming message or a notification about the transport progress or maybe a connection state change, something like this. And the challenging part is this. How to handle that notification uh, when it crosses the language border? Okay? This is exactly the part that, uh, that I will be talking about. <clears throat> if you think about this, you will notice that this is not really specific to communication libraries, not really specific to middleware, to nothing, because it's really a general problem. And many people will have that problem at some point. Uh, imagine a web server which is written in C and delivers uh, requests to handlers written in ADA. Same problem. Imagine a database server which is written in C and calls stored procedures in ADA. Again, same problem. Imagine the GUI library, this is an obvious example, okay? You expect that when you press the button, there is some action executed. If you want that to be delivered in an object-oriented way, it's again the same problem. In the more industrial context, I can imagine the alarm system, which also has this problem in the delivery of, uh, of events. So if the problem is really of such a general nature, then it should be possible to extract it in a way that is not really tied to any application domain. And that's what I did. I have extracted this solution to the problem and I have squeezed it down so that it fits on a single page of paper. That single page of paper, um, I wanted to give it to you so that you can refer to it after the conference. And thanks to the conference organizers, it happened. You already got it. You have it in your conference box in the guide to industrial sessions, this is page 16. You don't have to read it now. Um, please refer to it at your leisure if you are interested. But it gives me the comfort 
of not showing you the semicolons here. I will explain to you the mechanics, but the semicolons you have in your bags already. Uh, just to recap, you probably know that in order to integrate uh, languages L and C++, the common denominator for such an integration is C. So everything that happens between the two languages should be expressed uh, in a way that is digestible at the C level. Uh, this is a bit challenging for uh, dispatching invocations, so let's see how they can be expressed. The anatomy of the dispatching invocation, not only the callback, any object-oriented invocation is really composed of two different constituents. One is the object and one is the action. Interestingly, both of them can be uh, referred to using access values in AI. And access values are already entities that are understandable at the C level, which means that this can be sent through this level C channel down to the C++ component for further processing. Which brings us to the idea of additional translation layers. One translation layer at the ADA side will decompose the object-oriented uh, invocation into these two constituents, send it down, and another translation layer at the C++ level will try to do something with it. So the architecture is really this. At the very bottom, we have the C++ library with a notification engine. At the very top, there will be a user code with handlers, which are instances of some target type. Okay? And in between, there will be two translation layers. One is a C wrapper. I mean, it's really a C++ code, but that exposes its entries uh, as, as a uh, C functions, okay, so that they can be uh, they can be seen by the ADA code, and there is the ADA translation layer. <coughs> this is a layered architecture. Mm, layered architectures are really very common. Look like this. The the point is that this one, this one, is not really as bad as the the one on the right side. It's not as fat because the the layers in the middle here are actually very cheap. They don't do any processing. The only thing that they do is type conversion. And this is the conversion that doesn't even change the representation. It doesn't even affect the big patterns. Which means that it's very cheap even at the source code level, but at the object level, it disappears. So in, in technical terms, the only added overhead of these translation layers in relation to a single language solution is one procedure call and one dispatching invocation. This is really very little. Of course, I can imagine um, arguments that uh, if the handler at the ADA level doesn't do anything, then that cost is visible. Okay, but then you don't need the handler. Uh, normally, this is really, really very fast. Uh, 